Hello and welcome to First Chapter Friday. This week I'm going to be reading from The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane by Julia Noble. It is one of the 2020 Lone Star selections and I downloaded this book um, a couple days ago and I read it in less than 24 hours. So it's a good fast-paced adventure. It follows this girl Emmy. Um, her mom is this parenting guru who's going to do a TV show and so she's going to be traveling um, a lot for the year. And so she decides to send Emmy to this British boarding school. And Emmy's never gone to a boarding school before. And right before she starts to go, she starts getting these strange messages. And a lot of them um, apply to her dad, who she has not seen since her third birthday. He disappeared and they assume he's dead. But the longer and longer she's at the school... Um, she starts wondering if he may actually still be alive out th there somewhere and that he disappeared because of the secret society she's learning more and more about while in England. So it was good. It was great. There's a sequel to it that I downloaded and I'm about halfway through and that one's been good as well. So I hope you enjoy it. Chapter one, the parenting guru. There were certain things Emmy's mother didn't really need to know. Trivial things like whether Emmy had clipped her toenails or that she'd stepped in something sticky at the park. But the letter in Emmy's nightstand was not a trivial thing, and if her mom had found out about it, she would have pitched a fit. That's why Emmy was glad to be in New York City instead of home in Connecticut. She wanted as much distance between her mom and that letter as possible, even if it meant suffering through another boring book launch. Having a good time, darling? Emmy's mom said as she handed her a fancy-looking glass. She took a sip and just about gagged. She didn't know what real champagne tasted like, but the fake stuff was like someone had dropped pop rocks into a bucket of rotting apples. She did her best to smile. Her mom was mad enough already. Thankfully, no one's noticed that bandage under your hat, her mom whispered. Why you insisted on playing that soccer game today is beyond me. She smiled and waved at one of the party-goers. You knew my book launch was this evening, and yet... Emmy rubbed her forehead, where a ridiculous hat covered three fresh stitches. What was she supposed to say? Sorry, I'm a good soccer player, Mom. I'll try to suck more. That way I won't get on the good teams. I can't just skip a match, Mom. My team... Your team can certainly do without you for one game, Emmeline. Emmy cringed. It was never a good sign when her full name came out. Her mom took a sip of champagne. Listen, Emmy, there's something we need to talk about after the party. Emmy held her breath. Her mom didn't know about the letter, did she? If she'd found out, if she knew what Emmy was about to do. It's about my book tour. Emmy breathed out of, and picked up the front of her dress. She had to put her search out of her mind tonight. The last thing she needed was her mom getting suspicious. After my tour is done, I have another project in the works. I don't want to get into the details now, but things will be a bit different. I just want you to be prepared. The nerves wriggled back into Emmy's stomach. Be prepared? That's what her science teacher, Mrs. Henry, had said during their natural disaster drill last week. Pam, there you are. A little blonde woman bustled toward them, and Emmy tried not to groan. She usually avoided her mom's publicist at all costs. Mom kissed the woman's cheek. Gretchen, you've really outdone yourself with this party. Anything for my number one client? Gretchen turned to Emmy. And don't you look lovely this evening? That hat is just perfect for you. It darkens your hair so that red isn't nearly so shocking. Gretchen smiled as if that were a compliment, but Emmy knew better. She was used to people commenting on her orangey red hair. I'm so glad you could be here tonight. It'll really play well with the crowd. Did you invite a few friends like I suggested? Uh, nobody could make it. Emmy snatched a crab puff from a passing waiter's tray and stuffed it in her mouth. She hadn't invited anybody. She'd only been at her latest private school for a few weeks, and making friends had never been her strength. That would involve talking to people. A man came into the restaurant lounge, and Gretchen squealed, Clint! She grabbed him by the arm and practically shoved him at Emmy's mom. Pam, you remember Clint Markham from Parenting Now magazine? Of course. Clint, it's nice to see you again. Hi, Pam. I just love the new book. 
Isn't it fabulous, Gretchen said. There's so much buzz right now. Everyone is calling her America's favorite parenting guru. Emmy tried not to laugh. The only person she'd heard use that phrase was Gretchen. Over and over, any time a reporter was in earshot. And this must be your daughter. It's Emmeline, right? Emmy blinked. Uh, oh, yeah. She shuffled her feet. Reporters didn't usually talk to her, and that was the way she liked it. You must be very proud of your mom, Clint said. Emmy nodded. Clint looked like he was waiting for her to say something else, but Emmy had no clue what it was. Raising you all on her own while managing a big career? It must be like having Superwoman at home. Emmy nodded again. Maybe if she didn't say anything, he'd stop asking her questions. Clint cleared his throat and turned back to Emmy's mom. Gretchen was telling me all about your new project. It sounds so exciting. Something flickered in her mom's eyes. No one else would have seen it. She was always composed in public. But to Emmy, that flicker revealed a tiny jolt of panic. I'm surprised Gretchen gave you a sneak peek, her mom said. We were going to keep it under wraps for at least another week. I know, Gretchen said, but this seems like the perfect opportunity to strike while the iron is hot. Emmy's mom smiled and nodded. Emmy, why don't you get yourself something to eat? Emmy took a few steps toward the nearest waiter, but she didn't get very far. So, Pam, what made you decide to host a reality television show? Emmy whirled around. Her mom was going to be on TV? Her mom glanced at her. It seemed like a wonderful opportunity to really engage with the parents in a new way. We haven't finalized all the details yet, so I'd rather not say too much. Clint looked at Gretchen. What's the format like? She's going to be fully immersed with families for a few weeks at a time, Gretchen said. She'll tell them all the things they're doing wrong and whip them into shape. How exciting, Clint said. Is Emmeline going with you? Thump, thump, thump. Emmy's heart started beating a little harder. Her mom cleared her throat. No, it'll be too chaotic. Who's looking after her? Thump, thump, thump. Emmy's mom smiled widely, like a cheerleader who knows her team is about to lose. I found the most wonderful school. Emmy's going to love it. It'll be like living with family. Emmy wrinkled her pounding forehead. Schools weren't like families. It's not like she would be living at school. Unless her mom wasn't actually sending her to a boarding school. Clint finished Emmy's thought. Thump, 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 thump. An all-inclusive immersion school, her mom said. Emmy will be living with people her own age in a rich learning environment. Emmy had no idea what an all-inclusive immersion school was, but it sure sounded like a boarding school to her. Which school is it, Clint asked. Is it close by? Her mother looked down and smoothed the front of her dress, picking at a wrinkle no one else could see. Finally, she looked up again, her face smooth and serene. Actually, it's in England. It was like someone had dropped a sandbag on Emmy's chest. She couldn't breathe. Boarding school? England? Boarding school? England? Thump, 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 thump. Clint turned to Emmy. And how do you feel about all this? It must have been a bit of a shock when you first found out. Emmy's mom swallowed hard and stared at Emmy like she was begging her to say the right thing. The room started to spin like Emmy was on an out-of-control merry-go-round. She managed a wobbly smile. I'm just happy to support my mother. Her mom put a steadying hand around Emmy's elbow. You're just too good to me. Darling, I need to freshen up. Come with me. She pulled on Emmy's elbow and guided her to the bathroom. Okay, her mom closed the door behind them. You look faint. You're not going to pass out, are you? Emmy fell into a rickety chair in the corner. She didn't know what passing out felt like, but if the room kept spinning, she'd probably end up on the floor. She leaned her head against the wall, and the spinning started to slow down. Take a deep breath, and we can talk about this. Emmy wrapped her arms around her stomach and tried to breathe in, but there didn't seem to be enough air in the room. She wanted to ask questions, and to say how unfair this was, but it felt like someone had stuck a piece of gum inside the part of her brain that formed complete sentences. Boarding school. England. Boarding school. England. The words kept running through her head. I'm sorry you had to find out this way, her mom said. 
I only finalized things with the headmaster this morning, and I didn't want to tell you until I knew I had your schooling settled. I was going to tell you this afternoon, but that whole stitches debacle took all day. Why can't I stay here? Emmy finally managed to say. There's no one to look after you, but... Emmy, I am a child psychologist, and I'm your mother. I know what's best for you. Emmy sighed. She'd heard that phrase for almost 12 years, and she still hadn't found a way to argue with it. When would I have to leave? Her mom looked away. It's a bit of an unusual circumstance. They usually don't allow new students once term has started, so we're really lucky to let you in at all. But I had to agree to send you as soon as possible so you don't miss any more class time. Emmy's eyes welled up with tears. She was moving to another continent. She was doing it by herself, and she was doing it soon. Darling, I know this is difficult, but you're going to need to be strong. There's press out there, and I don't want them to think there might be something wrong. Gretchen is promoting me as a mentor for the moms and dads of America. Think of all the people I'll be able to help. But if you don't seem supportive, that'll be the story, and I won't be nearly as effective. Besides, this is a chance for you to get a top-notch education. That's what you said about Bartholomew Prep and Glenmore Heights. I know, but both of them really took a tumble in the school rankings, and I couldn't leave you there if they weren't going to help you get ahead. This school is going to be different. That's what her mom always said. Every time a school dropped a few ranks, she got nervous about Emmy not getting a good enough education, as if being the fourth best school in New England was worse than being at the second best. But boarding school? Emmy couldn't even imagine it. Her mom grabbed her hand and held it steady. Em, I didn't mean to keep this from you, she said, 